Good morning, good afternoon, good day, wherever you are on this amazing planet. I'm here in the UK. My name is Laura Topper, and I'm here joined today with our super guest, Patricia <laughs> Watson. Good morning, Patricia. How are you? Good morning, Reverend Laura. I'm fabulous. Oh, you are fabulous. You're, you're ready for it. I can feel it. <laughs> I love your hat and I love your top. Thank you. <laughs> and I love you. And, I, and I'm so um, elated that you're here again on the Women of Power show. You, you came on the show earlier in the year and shared about yourself and your singing. And I know that um, you have more to share here. And so welcome to the show. Welcome, Thank welcome. You. It is a pleasure to be with you again. Thank you. <laughs> I'd like to read some, a little piece or a piece from your bio. Sure. To introduce you for those that may not be aware of, of who you are and will be from this, this show. And, um, and just to share some of you and what you're doing, because sure. you are an in incredible force of nature. You have a beautiful voice, and I know that you're ready and prepared to sing and to share <laughs> that voice with us here today. Um, you're a winner of the African Nova Scotia Music Association's Rising Star Award, and you've been singing gospel music and jazz music for most of, of your life. Patricia, yeah. as a little girl, mm -hmm. had a recurring dream. I will be sitting in the audience watching myself <laughs> sing on stage. I love that. <laughs> and be on stage watching myself in the audience. Right. This is beautiful. <laughs> I want to talk about this. This is beautiful. Um, and since, uh, since taking it easier, because you've performed many, many, many times on different stages and settings for so many different audiences uh, who've enjoyed your, your singing, and now you, you choose to sing where and when it feels good for you. Exactly. Um, Patricia, yes, that's so beautiful. And P Patricia presently sings with her Patricia Watson Quintet um, and Seaside a cappella Chorus. Patricia is a licensed spiritual uh, religious science practitioner and um, having been a long time student of the science of mind philosophy uh, and a pr practitioner since 2004. So Patricia works with people to assist them in reclaiming or, re uh, or en enhancing their lives using practical and spiritual methods that help strengthen their experiences and lives. How powerful. <laughs> I love it that you mix this. Well, it's, it's you, it's who you be, you know, your voice and then um, assisting others to really reclaim their voice and hear the voice within. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And what guided you to that? I, I mean, I, I, maybe that's interwoven with, with seeing yourself in the audience and then seeing yourself in the audience, seeing yourself on the stage. It's very perceptive. <laughs> I think what's guided me to that is um, basically, you know, when I first started um, studying science of mind, um, and starting to do visioning and realizing that I wasn't living my truth, that I was actually doing what other people wanted me to do instead of what felt right in my heart. Um, and so in my business, because I was a management and employee development consultant and I had my own business. So in my business, one of the things that I would do with um, managers and employees and, and also coaching is around, even in a strategic planning process, I would weave in a piece of visioning. And instead of using what is God's highest vision for your life, it would be what is the highest vision for the project or the process of whatever you're working on and getting people in alignment with what's really important in their lives. Um, so I still do that. I've done it with, I love it. I've done it with kids in the second grade <laughs> um, because it's a wonderful way for them to really realize that this is what I want to do in life now that may change mm -hmm. later. As we know, it's changed over the years, but right now, right here, what is my calling? And um, I think that if all of us <laughs> yes. lived according to our calling, we wouldn't have what's going on around the world. So yeah, yeah. absolutely. And mm -hmm. and I that's so powerful. What I, how I'm hearing is that you learned something and you applied it to your life. You changed your life, and then you are a way shower. And it's like you're offering the invitation for others 
to reveal this within themselves as well. And by not including the word God, that often makes it easier for people yes. to tap in to, yes. to the conscious, their consciousness. Yeah, yeah. they understand um, without, the concept. Yeah, exactly. Understanding the concept, yes. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so when you knew at that young age that you were going to be seeing yourself on stage and then in the audience seeing yourself <laughs> and then vice versa, how did that, how, I mean, when, as that unraveled, did that vision still stay oh, with yes. you in your heart? Yes. Oh, yes. Um, I guess all through my life, but more so now that I realize it because I go to a lot of concerts, I go to a lot of theater, um, and I have been in positions of being on stage and enjoying. There's something that happens when I'm singing and when I'm on stage that now comes from a deep deepness within my core. Before I was singing uh, and performing, I guess you might say. Now it's more around, you know, before I do any concert or, or I always go into prayer and ask spirit to, to lead me, to guide me yes. and just allow the music to come through me instead of from here. Mm. <laughs> yes. Um, uh, yes. If I'm doing a new song, a lot of times it is from here because I'm remembering the words, but it's still, it still sits well in my soul, in my heart. Yeah. And do you think that, can you feel a difference in the response from the audience now that you are in, coming from that place? Huge difference, because I have people come up to me all the time. I've been singing at a lot of the churches because it's that time of year, yeah. and I get invited to sing at a lot of the churches around here um, and nursing homes as well, and retirement homes. And um, the last piece I did at one of the retirement homes, and there were probably about, I'd say, 60 um, seniors in the audience. Um, this one woman was sitting right in front of me. She sang eh, the words to every song I sang. <laughs> mm. This other woman got up and came over and just grabbed me and started dancing with me. Oh. So I ended up singing um, the song Georgia to her. Oh. Um, and it's just it's just how people light up. Um, I'll give you yeah. a really good example. My voice teacher of um, I had him for about five years before he went into a nursing home for dementia. He grew up um, as an, an operatic. He studied opera. He worked for a management uh, company in New York City, um, basically handling opera singers and and you know getting them performances all over the world. Wow. And then he moved to Nova Scotia and he started teaching at one of the universities here, Acadia. Um, when he retired, he came to Lunenburg and a friend of mine knew him because he was her voice instructor and teacher at Acadia. So Jim was my instructor for about five years and he went into the nursing home and I knew he loved opera. So what I would do is go in and visit him I'd take my little iPad and I'd put on the words, he loved Wagner. So I'd put on the words uh, and the music to Wagner. He would sit there and direct and sing. So that side of the brain did not go. Yes. And I've noticed it, you know, in, in sing, you know, with seniors, there's a place when my mother was in a nursing home, they had a little area called Memory Lane and they used to play the old songs all the time so that the seniors could sing along because that's what taps in. So that's one thing that never goes. Um, and so yeah. I love being able to have see people light. They light up. It's amazing. They Incredible. light up. <laughs> Incredible. That must be so fulfilling it for is. you and for them, of course. But it's a, if it's for them, it has to be for you because there's no separation, mm -hmm. is there? So. Mm -hmm. So yeah. what a beautiful thing to to do that and to to help people to to really remember who they right. are right right so powerful mm -hmm. so when you first started singing did you know that that would be i mean what was it for you was it about kind of touring the world and yeah. you know no it no. was never about touring the world i mean it's it's a beautiful dream but it's not something yeah. i really want to do um it's hard work i'm it, sure <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah it's more <laughs> To me, it's more about uh, bringing um, music to my community. And um, 
I mean, I, I sang last Sunday at one of the, the United Churches here and the Sunday before at another United Church. And I had a woman walk up to me at the, uh, I go to this um, the, the Lifelong Learning Center to swim. I'm taking swimming lessons. And a woman walked up to me in the pool the other day and put her arms around me and said, thank you. And I went, for what? <laughs> Um, and she said, I was at your concert when you sang Amazing Grace mm -hmm. and you touched my heart. Mm -hmm. So it's things like that. It's yeah. the payback for me is, you know, how people, how people feel really. Yeah. That's so important to me. Powerful. <laughs> and so tell me, Patricia, what is it about this time of year that I know you, you <laughs> love we all, you know, love, love, this love. season of light, yeah. and in particular, if you're celebrating Christmas or I'm, I'm celebrating Hanukkah, or you know, um, knowing Hanukkah at the moment, mm -hmm. lighting my menorah every night, and and the whole feeling of light, yes. knowing the light is here. Yeah. How does that really? Sp what is it that? How does that bring you joy? Um, the joy comes from seeing people's faces. Um, the joy comes from, it's not about the buying of Christmas presents and, and all that. To me, it's really about the, the Christ consciousness. Yes. It's, it's, it, to me, it's about how do I embody that and how do I show up? Um, I have this little saying on my desk that says, love speaks to me throughout the day. Mm. And I, in the moment, I'll go back and think, okay, so am I coming from a place of love mm. or am I coming from a place of ego? <laughs> mm. And um, so it helps me almost stop in my tracks when I feel, when I get really anxious, I know that I'm not coming from a place of love. Um, and this time of year, I mean, all the lights and I mean, I went crazy on the Christmas tree downstairs. It took me four hours to decorate it. <laughs> so I'm a little kid when it yeah. comes to Christmas again. Because this is what we did in my family when I was a little girl. We would go out around the neighborhood and basically sing carols, you know, around the neighborhood to our neighbors. And then, like, on Christmas morning, we would get up at some some early hour, like four o'clock <laughs> and go out to um, the sanitarium, which uh, was up, up in the mountains actually. Um, and then also go down to Muhlenberg hospital, which is in Plainfield, New Jersey and sing to the resident with residents, the patients and just go through the hallways and then come home and make breakfast for everybody who went out singing. And then we go home and open Christmas presents and you know, that whole family thing during during the Christmas holidays, which really meant meant so much to me as well. And um, what a give. What a give into yeah. into life to be able to do that with your family as well. Yeah. With your parents. With with my parents, with my mom. Um, yeah. uh, one of my sisters would go, but mostly, I mean, I came from a family of seven, so everybody's not getting up at that hour. Um, but one of my sisters would go and also people from our, our spiritual community and other communities, spiritual communities in Plainfield as well, would get up and go. And so when I moved to Nova Scotia, one of the things I wanted to do was how do I bring that here? And I live in a small community right along the river, um, the La Have River. And there are a lot of people here who can't get out, you know. Um, and so I, there was a store down the road called Storm and Normans. <laughs> it's not, and um, I was talking to Vivian one day and I said, you know, I used to do this when I was a kid. She said, well, why don't we get a group together and we'll do it up and down the river and then go to the little um, retirement home that's up the road. And we'll, you know, do this for a couple of years. For about five years, you know, while she was still alive, we would get together. We got our, our neighbor down the road who, who's a, a folk singer and he'd bring his guitar <laughs> and we'd go up and down the road and sing to people. So it, it was really lovely. Oh and, my gosh. And then once, once I, we went to the hospital on Christmas day and sang to the veterans at the veterans unit. And we did the same thing with my, David's mother was in a nursing home in Ontario. 
and I talked to the woman there to see the uh, activities director. And I said, can we come in on Christmas day? So she dressed one of the patients up as Santa Claus. And we went through the hallways singing Christmas carols to all of the patients. And it just, you know, it just touches your heart, you know? Um, and there was one gentleman who actually started crying while we were singing. And his brother told me that he was an opera singer. And um, and this sort of lightened his his day oh, really? because it brought back the, the, yes. you know, the feelings and the fact that he was a singer. So to me, it's, you know, the other thing I'm doing, which I love, my mom used to drive me kicking and screaming to listen to the Messiah because every year there was uh, an all cities chorus in Plainfield that would bring together singers from around the city to sing the full Messiah. So that meant rehearsal started in October. Oh my gosh. I and, and it's a big week. <laughs> <laughs> so she would grab me and take me and I'd go, oh my God, do I have to sit through this again? Cause it's a long rehearsal. And um, turns out that that sort of in, was became embedded in my soul and ever since that time, when I became a, even a teenager, I would go to the Messiah sing-alongs in whatever city I was in, like New York and Baltimore. I've done it here a couple of times. Um, I'm doing it again next week, the 23rd, I'm doing it here. And in Halifax on the 27th, there is a, 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 a full Messiah sing-along from scratch. Got my music. Oh my gosh. I'm ready. <laughs> you are ready. And we have a you've sent me a link here of a video which we can we can watch a little bit now. Or sure. Can, yeah, let's let's yeah. get this. Yeah. So your mother took part in in this. Your mother mm -hmm. and every year brought mm -hmm. you along. And so it's kind of ingrained in you as some as a possibility. Mm -hmm. And um, and what do you love about it now that maybe you didn't then, maybe you didn't appreciate at that time what is it for me now it's, you it's, think oh my gosh this is it's the know. opportunity to sing with about three other other people <laughs> um and getting together to sing some of my favorite pieces from the like the hallelujah chorus which everybody knows um he shall be dressed like a, a, there are some pieces in there that are just amazingly beautiful so this is the uh the Tabernacle Choir and a virtual choir doing the Hallelujah Chorus. Okay, I'm just going to, actually, I just want to double check that I click the sound. Mm -hmm. It's coming on in one second. Uh, yeah, audio is there. Let's put this on. And let's have a, a little, um, mm -hmm. where else? Yes. <laughs> Patricia, yeah. I want to go and do it. <laughs> I'm hooked. That is incredible. This is this is the highlight. <laughs> the end of it. It's just amazing, and I'm singing. That is incredible because um, what what came through to me. I mean, I've been I've been 
a member of singing groups and choirs over the years. And that is just like, that's like the full blown 10X, 100X version <laughs> of how it must feel amazing to, um, I mean, I don't know if your yours experience was as large as that with as many people, but that, that for me, that's the, um, that must be so uplifting to be yes. a part of that and singing and finding that unity and being a part of that unity with a group that size. And then the yeah. screens coming up. Wow. <laughs> I, th I think the largest was when I was living in Baltimore and I think there were at least 800 people in the stadium singing. I mean, they have professional singers, of course, and also a professional choir and also the musicians, but then everybody else sings along with it and they mm. put you in different sections. So um, just amazing. And just uh, last Monday, I had my voice lesson and this is basically what we did in the voice lesson was the Alleluia Chorus. Ooh. Um, I, I kept telling her, I said, I, I probably need to sing alto now because I can't reach the high soprano notes. And she said, I don't think so. Let's just work this. And so she did my warm-ups with me, and by the end of it, I was singing the soprano way up there in the stratosphere. So, <laughs> so I'm really excited. Fantastic. And also grateful for, um, I mean, George Frederick Handel composed the Messiah, or composed Handel's Messiah, and um, back in 1741. And people, millions of people have been singing this every Christmas and Easter, because there is an Easter piece of the of the uh, Handel's Messiah as well that some choruses do. But it's it's just amazing to be in that place surrounded by so many people singing this. It's just I don't know. I get chills. <laughs> How does it affect you? How do you come away from that? What is it? Do you feel that Christ consciousness that you were talking about before that? connection to the divine through your voice um do you feel that when a, when you yeah. when you sing with so many people at one time it's, it's so to me it's almost like it's a natural state of existence it's mm. it's it's i know we are all the sons and, and daughters of god and the sons and daughters and in in that whole concept around what christ consciousness means and it's it's really about to me each and every single one of us can have the same consciousness that Christ had. Each and yeah. every one of us can show up and do things in the world to make it a better place for folks to live. Not only for ourselves, because it does, as you know, it starts with us. Yes. It starts within here. But in also in terms of how I show up in the world on a daily basis, one of the crazy things I do is I hand out these cards called Have a Happy Day. Oh, it's not crazy. And I'm just. <laughs> Where are they? Oh, Jason's taken them. Hold on, because we had a pile of them. He's moved them. <laughs> it's not crazy because the beautiful Patricia, the beautiful spirit soul that you are, you sent me. Um, you sent me those cards and I've been giving them out. He's been giving them out. Oh, beautiful. We have a pile of them. He's actually taken the pile. Oh, okay. It's okay. I'll find them again. But um, we use them and hand them out to people. And and it and and when I do, when I hand them out, when I give somebody one of those cards, I feel a shift in them. I feel them reading it. It's like, oh, okay. Is this for me? Yeah. It's, yeah. it's for you because you are beautiful and you are you are you are a light bearer and exactly. have a wonderful day. <laughs> I mean, I love it because it started, um, we were living in Green Valley, Arizona for the winters. And so I was going to the Sonoran Desert for Center for Spiritual Living, which uh, the minister is Reverend Donna Maurer. And I was doing a workshop. And um, at the end of the workshop, it was a six-week workshop. At the end of the workshop, somebody handed me that card. And I went, wow, that's really lovely. So that was about seven years ago. And since that time, I have been handing out that car everywhere I go. And, and most people, like, I've had people cry. I've had people hug me. I've had people mm -hmm. thank me. I've had people go, you made my day. Um, I've had people say, no, thank you, which is fine. 
Mm -hmm. And it's funny because some people will take the card and then they'll look on the back and go, well, there's nothing there. And I said, well, right. there's nothing supposed to be there. This right. is not an advertisement. Yes. This is about, you know, having a happy day, moving into your day with grace and love and peace. And it's really about trying to help you feel who you are and feel better in your life. And isn't that incredible? As you were saying this, I was really feeling that for, for, for the different responses that you that you feel from handing that, and some people are happy and some people may be surprised that it isn't Very. because you're trying to get something right. from them. Right. This is literally, this is a give. And wouldn't it be amazing if we all handed those cards out to each other every single day, everywhere? That would be life changing. It would be, and it's they're very inexpensive. I mean, the first bunch I had printed cost me a lot, um, but then I heard about Vista Print, <laughs> yeah. and um, I've now print twenty five hundred at a time, and I think it's about eighty ninety dollars to print that many. Yeah, um, it takes me maybe about two and a half three months to go through it. If I'm traveling, I always take about five hundred with me on the plane and wow. nine times out of 10, by the time I come back, you're gone. <laughs> wow. And I, I, I remember hearing once, um, I, I, I think I was in a Louise Hay workshop and, and, and she, uh, you know, part of her teaching was, you know, give out cards to people, give out cards and that she would give out cards. And, and isn't it amazing when you feel like I've often found a card like that somewhere. Mm -hmm. And that, it's, so it, it really is very powerful because even if you're giving the card to somebody that doesn't want it, they'll put it down and someone else will pick it up. Right, right, right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. And somebody did that the other day when I was um, at the cosmetic counter in the drugstore. And uh, he, he said, thank you. And then he left it there and he said, I'm going to leave it here for someone else. And I said, oh, that's perfect. Yeah. <laughs> so this is all about your, your vision, your mission to raise or to be in that that higher frequency of Christ consciousness and yes. to live that and to be the example of it and to show yes. others that they can do it too mm -hmm. and through your voice and as a practitioner and how you be how you live in the world Patricia what you're doing yeah. it's yeah. so it's really powerful um you are a teacher thank you <laughs> you are a teacher teaching us all how to be it in every moment yeah, I'm trying to, um, I guess, it, in order to experience joy in my life um, and be of service, I look at how can I be um, spirit's instrument. If we're talking vocally now. <laughs> how can I be spirit's instrument of unconditional love and what does that look like and what does it mean to me? And it, to me, it really means doing my work. Mm -hmm. You know, I get up in the morning and I do my meditation and my prayer work and uh, my reading. And then I, <laughs> since I turned 79, I go outside on the deck and blow bubbles. 79. <laughs> and you blow bubbles. <laughs> I, I, I have this bubble machine. <laughs> And I, I, I mean, I, 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 what happens is my mom used to do all these crazy things. And I used to get so upset as a child that. She's an adult. She's got to be acting like an adult. Why isn't she doing that? And as an adult, I now understand why. <laughs> mm, yes. It's to call and have fun. So I go out on the yeah. deck and blow bubbles, which literally has helped me look at where I live. I mean, I, I live in a beautiful location. I look out right now at the water. I'm looking out at the trees. I'm looking out at the neighbors across the way. I mean, it's beautiful. And it changes. Yes. And it made me more aware of the changes that are happening around me in this beautiful place I call East La Hague. Yeah, home. And, and to play with it and have fun and not take it all life so seriously. Exactly. That exactly. we're here to enjoy this experience. Yeah. And, and Christmas or the Festival of Light season can bring a lot of pain and struggle mm -hmm. or, or remembering of pain and struggle for many people. It can be a difficult time of year. It can be a time where there are challenges and memories and um there are a lot of challenges a lot know? of challenges yeah. for, for even, people even and in so my own community i mean um uh i never realized it's really interesting and I, i'm now awake to it but i never realized that there were that many people within the bridgewater area and bridgewater is 20 minutes from me um that really don't can't make it literally cannot make it 
um, they either pay their rent or they pay their gas. They, mm -hmm. you know, that kind of thing. And so one of the things that's happening, and no, nor did I realize there are that many homeless people here. Um, there's a place here called Souls Harbor. They feed over a hundred people a day. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've gone in several times, you know, to take clothing, to, we, we made a donation. My Christmas gift from my son this year was a donation to Souls Harbor, you know, because I don't need anything. And um, I've uh, signed up yesterday to actually help volunteer there as well. But one of the things they're doing here in Nova Scotia, which I think is really Showing the, showing the consciousness and the, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, the love in terms of taking care of people is all across Nova Scotia. Um, um, most of the homeless are in shelters. So what, what happens here in Bridgewater is from eight o'clock in the morning to eight o'clock at night, people go to Souls Harbor. From eight o'clock at night to eight o'clock in the morning, a couple of the churches have them sheltered for the night so that people aren't out in the cold. Mm -hmm. um, so I feel consider that to be extremely loving and a, a way to treat people, really, you know, because so many people now, as you know, yeah. are in a state where they can't take care of themselves. Yeah. Right. So yeah. it's a way to, it's a way to brighten people's lives you know, and, and a way to take care of people and a way to make sure that they're being fed. Right. And what I what I really love about what you're saying and what you're sharing is how as a as a practitioner, as a spiritual guide and teacher, that you it, it doesn't that doesn't stop when you walk out of your center. In fact, it starts. It begins when you walk yeah. out of your center. Yeah. It has to. That's what yeah. I'm feeling yeah. with you. Yeah. <laughs> And my center, I mean, I'm just, I'm, I'm a remote practitioner. My center is the, the center of peace in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. So <laughs> we find ways to, to connect in. And, you know, one of the things that I love is I'm on the education care circle. And so we put putting together all the education for the year for our, for our community and also the outer community as well we're, we're teaching i'm teaching with one of the other practitioners in january starting january 11th meditation is more than you think mm -hmm. and there are people that have signed up for the class that are not part of the community and that's okay right yes that's okay that's, that's not what we're trying to do is to reach out exactly yes. mm -hmm. and so as a as your you know from from what i know of you that you you assist people to to see the light to see that <laughs> Christ consciousness in within within themselves and really you're doing this in so many beautiful ways what do you think um can be a barrier or a block Patricia for people that may feel oh you know that that's okay if Patricia can do it I I I'm not willing to go there and find the truth of who I am or I'm scared or I'm in fear or it might bring up too much you know um having to change my life yeah um, uh, yeah, literally, or let go of people. <laughs> or how do you, how what would you say right now to somebody that might be watching or at any point and feeling this? Um, I would think that one of the things that's important to think about is, does this feel right now? I mean, if, if I'm in a state where it's very uncomfortable, and I'm afraid to step out, then I think it's important to talk to someone, talk to a friend, talk to somebody you trust, not somebody who's going to give you advice. Mm -hmm. In other words, if I, if I were saying that, you know, I'm afraid of this. Okay. I'll give you a good example. <laughs> I'm taking swimming lessons. <laughs> and my husband said to me yesterday, you're doing well. A lot of what I think is happening, Patricia, is it's in your head. And he's right. It is. So I'm looking at what is the fear that's holding me back? Right. And so I deal with that with my lovely practitioner, who is Reverend Rainbow. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, shout out to Reverend Rainbow. Shout out for Reverend Rainbow <laughs> Johnson. Uh, so it's about talking to somebody that you're very comfortable with. Um, and 
in in my case, I'll be honest, in my case, the only reason I'm here now is because of all the pain that I went through and going through um, counseling, you know, in my in my family, counseling was an embarrassment because that meant that something was wrong with the family. And in essence, that's not the case. For me, in order to move forward and let, as, as Reverend Tawana Malone, who's my senior minister says, the theme this whole year was let the ish go. <laughs> so the right. stuff that is holding us back from being our magnificent selves, from being the expression of God in human form, from being who we truly are in this world, I need help. I can't do it on my own. Yeah. And even though I've come this far, there's still times <laughs> when I go, oh my God, no, no, we got something else to clear. <laughs> and that's so powerful for you to share this, um, Patricia, because we people that are viewing right now, hello and welcome to to viewers right now or what at any point in time. You know, we we see people on shows like this and we think, oh, they've got it all together or they haven't got any or they've worked through so much. And now and it's a continual eternal process, isn't it? That we're all choosing to say yes to yeah. revealing the light within us in every moment. We have the choice. Yeah. And at this point, I choose to work it, even if it's painful, <laughs> but, because I know I know what it's been like. And I know that I don't want to go back there. Right. And I know that it's important for me at this point in my life. I have no idea how much longer I have on this earth, but I'll be honest with you. I want to live it to the fullest. Yes. I don't want to ever get to the point where I'm on my deathbed and I'm surrounded by people who love me. And I go, I wish I had. No. I'm going no. to say, I did it. <laughs> <laughs> That's quite a common thing, isn't it? There has been research around this where, where people have been interviewed at that point of, of time of transition and, and have said, oh, my gosh, I wish I would have dot, dot, dot. Yeah, fill in, the, that, fill right. in the blank. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you're doing it. I'm, I'm trying. Let's doing it. I'm would trying you? with a lot of support. Okay. <laughs> Well, it's it's a it's a it's a it's a giving cycle, isn't it? It's an ever-ending cycle and spiral. As you give, you receive the support. It's like as we give, we receive. So the support is naturally going to be there for you, Patricia, because of who you be. And I think it, you know, I think the hardest thing for some folks is to be able to reach out. I'm very open and I'm I'm very verbose, um, but if I if I were more standoffish and it would be really hard. So that's why I say um, if you're having issues or problems and you really want to reach out, reach out to somebody who's close to you that you trust. Yes. You know, I wouldn't go out and talk to a stranger about my issues because one, I don't know them. And two, they probably try to give me advice and the advice they would give me would probably work for them, but not for me. Mm. And so that's one of the yeah. things I think is important, especially I learned as a practitioner is scratch the advice <laughs> and listen yes. and just listen and yes. just, just show up and be a beneficial presence. You know, that's and even in that good. listening, we can, even if we, there isn't somebody that we feel, Oh, I can trust that person. Even in the listening, yeah. the information will, the inspiration can come through. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Even in the listening. Directly. From right. the divine, yes. Right. Exactly, yeah. Mm -hmm. And if you belong to a center, we've got practitioners, really. And you are, and you are a practitioner. <laughs> I'm going to show your website in a moment. I wonder, okay. while I set this up, I wonder if I can put you on the full screen, remove myself, and um, and you kindly offer to share a, a song <laughs> here right now for us live. The okay. great Trisha Watson. <laughs> This is acapella, folks. <laughs> um, one of my favorites during this time was a, a, sung by Nat King Cole many, many moons ago. And it's uh, chestnuts roasting on an open fire. Here we go. Chestnuts roasting on an open fire. 
Jack Frost sniffing at your nose. Yuletide carols being sung by a choir. And folks dressed up like Eskimos. Everybody knows a turkey and some mistletoe help to make the season bright. Tiny tots with their eyes all aglow will find it hard to sleep tonight. They know that Santa's on his way. He's loaded lots of toys and goodies on his sleigh. And every mother's child is sure to find, to see that reindeer really know how to fly. And so I'm offering this simple phrase for kids from one to 92, although it's been said many times, many ways. Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas to you. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. And so it is. <laughs> Yay. Yes. What a treat. Thank you, Patricia Watson Live. You, you heard it here on the Women of Power show. <laughs> I want to come and see you. So I want to be with you in the audience. <laughs> okay. 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 Let's see. Next I one is uh, the 23rd. Yeah. <laughs> 23rd. Where is it? <laughs> um, ac no, actually, it's Christmas Eve. I'm singing Christmas Eve at, at um, the Trinity United Church right here in Riverport. It's about five seconds from where I live. <laughs> oh, you have somewhere, a, a, a church right next to you. Um, it's a United Church. There are a lot of um, several United Churches in Canada really resonate with my soul, definitely. And so Why? I've been singing. Um, okay, very good question. Their beliefs are very similar to ours. Yes. Really. Um, they, they, they talk about the Christ consciousness a lot more. But the bottom line is their beliefs in their own humanity, around how we live in this earth, around how we treat each other, around inclusivity are very, 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 very similar. And it feels very comfortable. So when I'm in their presence, I feel like I'm home. Mm. <laughs> and it's so important, isn't it, that where we be, where we be in spiritual community, we feel comfortable yes. and we feel good. And it doesn't come from a feeling of, oh, I should be here or... I told my my spouse I would come with, but I don't really feel. Yeah, you know, it has to feel right, doesn't right. it? Otherwise, it's, I you can't to be here. Yes, yeah. mm -hmm. I choose to be here. <laughs> I like the word. I choose. Yes, I love that too. It's very empowering, and I think for for us right now, it's a great word because it gives us it gives me that sense of I take responsibility. Yes. For every moment, whether I think I'm like, as you said, if I'm paying a bill or circulating or eat, paying for food, I'm choosing. Mm -hmm. I'm not feeling pressured or in that lower frequency of victim consciousness. Yes. In a choice. Mm -hmm. You got it. It is a choice. Mm -hmm. Patricia, <laughs> thank you so thank much for you. being here show today and for <laughs> lighting up my day and my life and being here thank you and i appreciate it for all that you be and you're in, inspiring <laughs> me and and many many people by modeling christ consciousness what it is to be that that light at whatever time of year with all that you're doing and it is. Uh, 
It, this is around all year long, not all just now. Year long. <laughs> all year long. <laughs> and it really suits you because Thank you're you. glowing. It's I can I can tell you you're doing it and you're being fed as well, yes. nourished oh. in your soul. Yes, definitely being fed. Yeah. Will you ever run out of those cards? <laughs> no, because no. I keep ordering them. Yes. <laughs> And it feels so good. It really does. It feels so good to, you know, initially I was just handing them out, you know, have a happy day. But now it's, it's, it's the inner, it's the interchange with people. Yes. It's to see, it's to see the glow really in their hearts. I gave, um, um, at the life center where I go swimming yesterday, I gave cards out to the entire staff. And one of the instructors, who's, who's hysterical, said, well, you gave me one, but I don't have one for my partner. I went, oh, no problem. <laughs> so, yes, here's another one. <laughs> here's another one, You're right. <laughs> yeah. Beautiful. So thank and you. I, mm -hmm. I think what I love about what you're doing with the cards is that sometimes we can, or I can, overcomplicate things, overcomplicate spirituality, mm -hmm. spiritual routine, spiritual practice, spiritual ritual. And this is a beautiful way of, of, of showing an act of kindness. Right. right. Yeah. And, and normally I have them on my desk and I don't have any on my desk. They're in the closet. I know, I'm still looking for mine here. <laughs> Cause I was going to show one. <laughs> it's purple and it's beautiful. <laughs> Do you want me to go grab one real quick? <laughs> Do you want to? I'll show yeah. your website. Okay. While while you go and grab them, I'm gonna go and I'm gonna show Patricia what Watson's uh, website again, where you can find Patricia, and and you can uh, you can see her music. Patricia has a, a YouTube channel also, and all of her music is here with all of her upcoming events. There we are, Patricia singing her song. Beautiful. I love your website. I love the Thank simplicity you. of it and uh, the energy of your imagery. <laughs> yes, and you have all your events on your website also, don't you, Patricia? Yeah, all of them aren't listed right now because um, okay. this whole month is not listed yet. So, um, so I'm sure they'll be there. Yeah. Oh, let's go back. So, so where is the card? card? Yes. Let's have a beautiful day. And it says, who you are and what you do is greatly appreciated. Thank you. Have a beautiful day. And I love the lotus flower. So. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Patricia, for sharing. Thank you. It's going to inspire me to go onto Vista Print, into Canva. <laughs> <laughs> make something. <laughs> yeah, make something. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> that works. All right. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Shining your light and for writing and contributing into Divine CEO magazine. Oh, right. This, this month's month. about Divine CEO. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Thank you for being <laughs> present in there. And I know that you're going to next year be sharing in there also and yes. writing, yes. Um, writing your truth and your word in the magazine. So yes. what a blessing. Thank you, Patricia. Thank you. And I just want to say, everybody, have a magical and blessed holiday season and live 2024 mm -hmm. to your dream. Live your dreams totally in live 2024. Your dreams. Yeah. yeah, live your dream. Yeah, <laughs> beautiful. If not now, when? <laughs> now. Now. Now, now, now. <laughs> yes. Here's your website one more time, Patricia Cat Watson Sings. And I will also put up the link to uh, if you are um, if you're interested in receiving the magazine. It's a free magazine. There's the link. Um, you just go to my page, sign in, and you will get this month's edition, where you'll see uh, Reverend Verona Garland on the cover and Patricia and many others writing mm -hmm. inside, and Reverend Rainbow Johnson as well. Yeah, she's in there as what well. A it's a great magazine, folks. Beautiful. It really is. <laughs> Thank you again, Patricia, thank you. and thank you, yeah, thank everybody, you. for watching, being here, being present, and being the love that you are. Bye for now. <laughs> Bye for now. <laughs>